for seafood. And think about why your grandma loved cast iron. It's because it gets hot, stays hot. We're gonna get a nice consistent sear. If ever you've seared a steak or pork chop on like a stainless steel pan or aluminum pan, and you notice little bits are brown and little bits are gray, it's because you're not getting that even Maillard reaction, that even consistent heat that cast iron and only cast iron can afford you. So I really wanna show off that steak and potatoes. Now while these preheat, we've got our steak seasoned, salt, pepper, they're dry, they're room temp, perfect. And now I've got some potatoes. I'm also gonna dry the potatoes because I'm doing a dish called a fondant potato. And if anyone's ever had a fondant potato before, again, let me know on Facebook. This is one of the best potato dishes you can ever make. And it's about making something as boring as a potato exciting again. So paper towel, you could do it with a kitchen towel as well to really pat them dry. Moisture is the enemy of my sear, whether it's a steak or a vegetable or a potato, anything. And I'm going a little more salt and pepper, not too much, but just enough to season. Okay. And we're gonna start searing the potatoes and the steak. But wait till you see what else I do with these potatoes. Hold on a second. You can see that I half the potatoes and that gave me a beautiful little surface area. They're starting to sizzle to kind of get a nice sear. Let them swim in the oil. Little olive oil is cool, okay? And we're gonna kind of arrange them in this beautiful little circle. And this is a really cool recipe to show with the cast iron because as the potatoes sear, I'm gonna flip them and finish them with stock and butter. And similar to the seafood soup, it's gonna be showing a couple different techniques at the same time. Because right now we're in the searing stage of things, and then we're gonna go into the braising stage of things with stock and with butter and herbs. And as that potato braises, it releases its starch and thickens the stock almost into this smooth sauce for the potatoes. So these are really gonna be fun. Now they're searing nice and high, and I'm gonna dip my steak now into my hot pan, room temperature steak, leave it out of the fridge for about 30 minutes. So it's still safe, but not ice cold. And into my pan. Okay, steakhouse has started. We've got the steak searing, we've got the potato searing. Now searing 101, steak, chicken, pork, potatoes. I'm not playing with anything. I'm letting the heat do its thing. I'm gonna let it sear without futzing with it. Sometimes people like to play with things. They like to think they're doing something just by moving tongs around. Let it sear. Let it have a, a consistent touching of the surface area of the cast iron to get that Maillard reaction, which is what we want. And by the way, as this sears away, we have this amazing splatter guard from Kitchen HQ, and I'm gonna tell you why I love it. So number one, it's made out of silicone. So heat proof up to 450. All those splatters won't go on your stovetop, which is a pain to clean, and it won't go on your apron or 